what made me decide to be in a Bong Joon-ho film? Bong Joon-ho. <laughs> Not only his work, but really the person. We met maybe two years ago, and we became friends instantly, and we wanted to play together. I can't say it any more complicatedly than that. We wanted to play together like a pair of children, and it was like a kindergarten for us. But again, it's very curious for me to hear constantly this reference to the nationality of the filmmakers. I'm not personally a very great respecter of the idea of nationality in art. I believe that the cinema in particular is a kind of free-range opportunity for all of us to be human. Um, and so, in that spirit, this particular crew of people uh, were family. They were under the leadership, of course, of Bong, who is a, 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 a big child. Um, they were, it was a, it was a, a family of, of, of really inspired and, uh, and playful individuals that for me felt very, very natural. I mean, let's face it, it really felt like I was in Scotland. So that's enough of, uh, of national conversation. Uh, well, for me, uh, directors are the most important piece of the movie making process. I think directors are where the movie starts and ends. I've read dozens of scripts that were brilliant, that made pretty lousy movies, and vice versa. You know, I, I think I think if any one of us wrote down everything you said in a given day, I don't think it would necessarily encompass who you are as a person. So, to me, a script is just words on a page. A director is the person that brings that, that, that character and that story to life. So, for me, I, I, I go where the good directors are. And, and in my opinion, Bong is one of the top in the world. Uh, so, it was, it was uh, pretty simple to decide to jump on board. Director Bong just said that I am an elf. <laughs> It's now official. Um, Mason, we, we had a very um, enjoyable game when we were making the film of imagining Mason's life before the train. And in fact, Mason's cabin on the train, what was in the cabin, what Mason did behind the closed door um, of, of the cabin. Mason is a construct. Mason is um, not that different, in fact, to most of the leaders we see photographed on the front of our newspapers every day. They tend to give themselves medals, right? Some of which they made themselves. Very often they wear slightly strange makeup and wigs and uniforms that they invented for themselves. And who knows what they are? Um, do you want to translate? And as extreme, we kept thinking of extreme gestures for Mason and extreme uh, looks. And then we would see some documentary footage of a leader through history or even contemporary leaders who are just as extreme. And um, we realized that we were making something very, very true to life. But when director Bong first gave me the script of uh, Snowpiercer, Mason was described, I think Mason is still described in the script, as um, an ordinary looking man in a suit. Uh, I think in terms of injuries sustained while filming, there weren't too many. You know, we had fantastic stunt coordinators and they make sure you don't get hurt. I think the most difficulty of shooting, uh, the most, uh, difficulties we encountered shooting those action sequences were that the set pieces were on gimbals, so the ground beneath you is moving, and uh, that can always create a certain level of unpredictability. Um, in terms of the difference of shield versus act, I, 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 suppose, I suppose the shield is more of a, it's a defensive tool, as where Captain America is, you know, pioneering for safety and freedom and and he's not revolting. The ax is a bit more of a violent weapon. Uh, and, and when you're the leader of a revolt, I'm sure an ax would serve you a lot better than a shield would.